G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Whether it's skill issue, a crappy matchmaker, or whether it's just the plane itself, I've really had a hard time enjoying this particular plane. Welcome to the Mirage 3E. This is a plane that was introduced a long, long time ago to War Thunder, but to this day, I really just don't enjoy. Don't get me wrong, I've got some good matches to show you, but at the end of the day, these are all gotten through blood, sweat, and tears. This isn't a plane that I've enjoyed gathering footage for, and you might just see why. But first, a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Opera GX. Most browsers are boring, but not Opera GX. Opera GX is packed with features that genuinely enhance and customize your browsing experience, particularly for gamers just like you. Opera GX has unparalleled levels of customization, accessible through GX mods, where you can have everything from giving websites the Mexico filter to wallpapers. They even have the option for background music. Don't you feel nice and calm? Opera GX's GX control feature allows those with struggling PCs and internet connections to limit how much CPU, RAM, and internet bandwidth it uses, allowing you to watch YouTube content without causing in-game stuttering or packet loss for those with low-end systems. Opera GX also features popular social media integrations into the sidebar, allowing you to access apps like Messenger, Twitter, VK, Twitch, and Discord from the sidebar. I often use Messenger from the sidebar and it is extremely convenient. Head down to the link in the description below or scan the QR code on screen to download Opera GX for free and support an excellent long-term sponsor of the channel. Give it a try. You might just like it, just the same way that I did. Now you might think the introduction of the video was kind of harsh on the Mirage 3E. Of course, there have got to be some sort of upsides, it's not going to be 10.3 for nothing. And you'd be right, there are certain upsides and we'll explore those later on in the video. But I want to talk about the downsides. This plane is obese. It is an absolute chonkosaurus rex. You're not going to be winning any dogfights, and the plane is a real struggle in a turning engagement. It tends to bleed a lot of speed, it doesn't have the best acceleration, and you would think that there would be some sort of performance quality that it's redeeming in some sort of way, and honestly, I can't really find one. That's the problem with the Mirage. It's not a particularly good airframe, or at least the Mirage 3E, does, uh, in combination with its engine, is not particularly powerful. Of course, later variants of the Mirage, such as the Mirage 2000, are quite good, and the Kefir series are fairly notable as well. But of course, the Mirage 3E is not quite as light, and of course, not quite as robust, and you don't even have the missiles to make up for it anymore. With the recent missile nerfs, that being they are more susceptible to flares and don't have the same travel distance as they used to, they tend to be a bit more of a letdown than usual on the Mirage 3E, where you can't really rely on your performance as much as other aircraft that sort of sit around this battle rating. You think about the other 10.3s, and honestly the Mirage 3E is not one of the ones that you would consider one of the front runners. You would see things like the F8U, you would see things like the MiG-21s, and uh, even at 10.3 you would, or 10.7, you would see the AJ-37. Uh, but none of the Mirages sort of spring to mind here. And I don't really know why this plane is particularly obese, but that's okay, because we'll sort of learn to deal with it in this video. One of the things that you will find with the Delta Wing design is that it bleeds quite a lot of speed in a turn. And this is kind of natural for a Delta Wing design. I'm not really sure why, but someone can explain it in the comments who's a bit more knowledgeable on this than I am. At the end of the day, you just need to know that if you keep turning, you're going to run out of energy, and it's going to be really, really bad. So you have to watch your speed. You can see in this engagement just how much speed I've dumped, and even in this turn, despite me shedding altitude, I am still not gaining that much speed. On top of that, the Mirage 3E does not have a particularly powerful engine that sort of accelerates it at any sort of notable rate. Of course, it's got an afterburner, which gives it an advantage against non-afterburning planes at altitude, but that's kind of where it ends. The Mirage 3E doesn't really have any major redeeming qualities, which is why I don't particularly see a lot of them around on the battlefield. It's got flares, which allows it to mitigate some of the effects of the Su-25 and the A-10. It's got some uh, sort of decent medium-range radar capabilities, but at the end of the day, you have three missiles and a fairly mediocrely performing plane. So what are you going to do? And the answer is stick with your team. One-on-one -on -one engagements are really, really bad for you. And you'll find that later on in the video, the one-on-one -on -one engagements that I engage in are sort of won by luck and luck only. Now, 
I somehow get unlucky with this missile. The other one is going to ring out and it's going to home in nice and true. And that's one of the nice things about the magics. When they home in and when, the, when they're coming in, they are pretty damn solid. And so you can rely on them at about a range of one and a half kilometers. I probably wouldn't be pushing it further than two now that the missiles haven't got the range that they used to. Before that, you can fairly comfortably engage outside of two and a half kilometers. But at the end of the day, whatever happens in the game is nothing that you can change, only something that you can adapt to. Now, speaking of adaptation, this F4F has decided to push out in front and you can see just how much speed he has. And so because he's jetting away, he's getting some distance, I'm going to shift my attention here to the AV-8 that needs a little hand with this F1. And I'm more than happy to oblige. The defa cannons are going to ring out nice and true, and I saw the wing off the F1 without a problem. The cannons are actually quite a nice part of this plane. They're fairly well reasonably mounted. They're in the shoulder of the aircraft, and they're close to the center of the fuselage, and they don't really give you any problems. They are a little bit short-ranged, they sometimes don't quite do the damage that you want them to, but honestly that's kind of true for all 20 and 30 millimeter cannons at this tier. So we're just going to keep vibing and see what we can make of this particular situation. I'm going to head to the right here because I see more teammates that way and I see a better possibility of coming out on top. This MiG-21 is probably going to be my next little meal here. Unfortunately, I'm traveling too fast and I'm in the territory where I just cannot keep up in uh, maneuvering. Now, I noticed that SU-25, I was going to switch to him, but he's on fire. And so I don't really want to steal any kills. So we're going to go for this uh, MiG-21S instead. Notice the speed that I'm hemorrhaging as I go over. You've got to be really careful of this because if you end up in a situation where you need to keep all of your energy, you're basically going to have to play like an old-fashioned boom and zoomer or like a old 9.0 Hunter F1 style where you just zoom around the map and try and pick off enemies and you can kind of do this but I've got players that are maneuvering and teammates that can sort of bait enemies for me and I've managed to snag myself an ace and I, I don't know I find this a little bit of a miracle because I don't really come across aces in this plane very often despite that you will see a couple in the rest of this video so we're going to move on and these are the matches where you will find the best coming out of this plane. These are the big EC maps. These are the absolutely giant maps that I honestly find really boring at times. And you can really very, very easily get lost and players can hide and all this sort of stuff. We'll, we'll see a little bit of everything later on in this match. The key enemies here are the MiG-19 and the MiG-21. The MiG-19 is going to be a particular pain because the MiG-19 does exactly what the Mirage does worst. It maintains its energy and it has very good acceleration. That energy is super critical in a dogfight and you can see how quickly this MiG-19 is going to be able to energy trap me and force me into situations where I do not have any control. He's gonna come in, I'm gonna dodge out of the way just, but I have to keep going. If I try and engage, I feel like I'm just gonna get caught up in a big problem and it's so close here. I've had to drop my afterburner and I'm simply hemorrh hemorrhaging so much of that energy, that precious energy. And you can just see now the absolute advantage this MiG-19 has over me. He's a kilometer and a half above me and I have 400 kilometers per hour of airspeed left. I cannot keep into this vertical. There's no way that I can even send the magic and it will hit. I'm trying so desperately to keep on, but there's just nothing left. I butcher that pretty badly. I maybe could have had that, but at the end of the day, the MiG-19 just clearly, very clearly, has such an advantage over me, and I have no other choice but to go down towards the deck and maybe try and engage something else while the MiG-19 is distracted by teammates or, or just something like that. I'm going to try and lock this MiG-21. I'm going to try and use the R530, and while I'm doing that, while I've maintained that lock, I need to keep an eye on that MiG-19. He is going to be my absolute bane. And you will see throughout these next two matches, the Mirage will be really, really struggling against things like the MiG-19. And this is why you should never write the MiG-19 off. It is a difficult plane to fly, but the performance is just unparalleled. Now, we've got a flare situation here. That is a simple R60M. Very, very easy to flare. But at the end of the day, we are really needing to keep our attention here on this MiG-19. It's just something that I'm... I, I, look, I don't know what that missile was, but 
it's a very very frustrating engagement because I just I'm just not at an advantage and I don't think I ever will be in this situation I've managed to damage the SU-25 and that's good enough for me for now but again look how high up the MiG-19 is he's able to energy trap me he's able to basically put me exactly where he wants me and all he needs to do is come in at a speed that is low enough that he's able to snap on because of that sort of 800 900 kilometer per hour mark there is not a lot of maneuvering and you can see that i don't even have enough speed to pull into him he's going to overblow this a little bit i'm going to try and maybe spray see if i can get something but my aim's just not good enough i just haven't got enough skill at hand to do some damage with the defers and so i'm just stalling out energy trapped against this mig-19 and this is the critical thing that really ruins the mirage for me i uh, as a matter of personal preference prefer planes that can handle their energy i don't really like the the true boom and zoomers as such i don't particularly like the straight turn fighters i like something that's a little bit of a hybrid and you can exactly see why the mig-19 uh fits my personal preference I want to try at least to bait this MiG-19 into wasting his energy, and it looks like he has, and this is the critical mistake that I can potentially capitalize on. You can see he's quite slow, he must have done something stupid, and this is pretty much the only time that I can make count. He's got an engine out, the uh, AV-8 must have done some damage, and that's pretty much the only time that I can get a kill on a MiG-19. If he makes a monumental error, or has some significant battle damage, and again, You'll see this coming in later. This exact same thing with very, very similar situations. We're going to move forward. I've rearmed, repaired. I've got something heading to me at a fairly quick pace. So we're going to fire up the R530. We're going to send it on its way. Hopefully do a little bit of leading here. And maybe we can get ourselves a nice easy kill. But this is all dependent on the opponent looking at someone else or being distracted. And it turns out that the R530 isn't going to be the silver bullet that I really hoped. We're coming up against an A5C, we're at 5,500 meters, and this is not an ideal situation for me. The A5C is actually going to beat me in certain parts of this engagement, and I'm going to be really, really struggling to make things work. I'm going to put myself into the vertical, because I'm fairly confident that the A5C will struggle to maneuver, but it looks like he's actually got the, the, the sort of upper hand here. And this is scary because you are no one that no one's around to help you uh you're at a critically low speed you're at an altitude that doesn't really service your needs as appropriately as you wished and there's not really a whole lot that you can do apart from hope that the a5c makes a critical error and spray away and that's exactly what he's done he's run out of energy run out of talent and it's just happened to go for me in a very sort of strange turn of luck I honestly find that the A5C could have beaten me quite easily if he had gone into the vertical, played some energy, much like the MiG-19 had, and that would have been the end of me, quite plain and simple. The Mirage does have the ability to sort of stave off these enemies, but it only comes with a decent amount of luck and, of course, some really, really close calls. I prefer playing the Mirage at the lower altitudes simply because I feel like I get better acceleration and I'm able to just cut into turns just that little bit better. I don't really know why, but that's that's kind of the way, that's, that's kind of my hunch, if you will. Uh, so the Mirage is a really, real big struggle moment. I don't think it has a particularly good climb rate. I think its climb rate is uh, fairly mediocre. I, I can't remember the exact number. Uh, but I'm pretty confident that every other plane at this battle rating that is sort of that I'm facing, that I'm talking about here, such as the MiG-19, the A5, uh, the Harriers, they can they can quite easily get above you, and you'll find that they will be above you for a lot of the match. Once they're on the front foot against you, there's not a lot that you can do. You can just kind of hope and pray that something bad happens to them, and that's really about it. We're going to go into another engagement here with the MiG-19. I have got the afterburner on, but you can see. At this altitude, that delta wing is just not providing the lift that it needs. I kind of need to be at that lower altitude where uh, the, the sort of shorter wing becomes a bit more of an advantage. The MiG-19 has those really nice spread out wings and it's going to work in quite the advantage to him, provided that I can get the missile off. And for some reason, the missile doesn't track well enough. I don't understand why that should have gone home. But regardless, that's the sort of hand that we've been dealt and I kind of need to find a different way out of this situation. The MiG-19 is going into the vertical turn fight, and this is a great advantage for him. This is exactly what I said that the A5C should have done earlier. And you can see that I'm trying to just get up to the point where I can fire a missile, and maybe that will be enough. 
but I can't lead the missile nearly enough to get me the result I want. And I am now in a situation where I've committed to this stall climb and the MiG-19 could have possibly come in if he had had enough speed, had enough energy. We're really pushing the limit of our planes. And you know, this is a great dogfight to see and a great example to show for you guys watching at home what the MiG-19 and the Mirage 3E are capable of. But of course, I still believe that the MiG-19 is a way better fighter in this situation and it's simply better at altitude, at least that's what I've found here in these dogfights. The Mirage is starting to get the upper hand, you can see, and that's because I'm turning the dogfight into a horizontal. I'm just trying to get my guns on here, and this is the absolute limit of the plane. You can see the moment that the MiG-19 pulls the vertical dogfight, I end up losing my advantage. And the moment the MiG-19 switches back into the horizontal is when I regain that advantage. Of course, dropping down a little bit to a slightly lower altitude is good for me. And it's really, really starting to show up. You can see as we go down and down and down, the advantage in a dogfight as such becomes a lot more apparent towards the Mirage. And this is something that I can try and use to exploit. I managed to get myself a hit. And this should be enough for the MiG-19 to be damaged enough to try and run away. In this case here, I'm either going to finish off with guns, which I do, uh, but I could have also used the last missile that I had. This is super precarious situations, and, and these, are, these are engagements that you just sort of can't fuck up. If you make one single mistake, you're absolutely gone. If you were in the MiG-19, you could see that that guy made a couple of mistakes, uh, but at the end of the day, it's a lot easier to get away with it if you're just in a better plane. And the Mirage 3E is, is just not that. Now, I do want to show you this last engagement. This is probably my highest altitude kill to date at uh, 15 plus thousand meters. That is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Honestly, I don't know who climbs to this altitude, but this guy did, and it took me about five minutes to get up to his altitude. Maybe more. We almost lost, well, or sorry, we almost uh, ran out of time in the match to get this kill. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. It takes a lot to climb up to these altitudes. At the moment, I'm at 10,000 meters, and that is absolutely absurdly high. But the only reason I am at an absurdly high altitude is because I took the time to climb off to the side, and the engagements were quite slow. You'll find that this match is a fairly slow match, and uh, a little bit of packet loss there is giving me a bit of grief. I don't really know why. Uh, it could be Australian internet. It could just be skill issue. It could be God knows. But once all that kerfuffle is over, we're just looking for enemies on the radar, really, and just trying to pick them off in one versus one engagements at medium to low altitude. And F-104 is a fairly easy target that I can do that with. I'm going to go for the guns, miss the guns because of skill issue, and I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to see what the F-104 does, and I've just noticed an AV-8 behind me, which means that I need to pop a couple of flares. And it's actually quite nice to have flares in the, uh, in the Mirage 3E, because... It's an advantage that the Mirage 3C doesn't really have, and it's one of the first uh, French planes that you get that has flares. Now, I know for a fact that the AV-8 is a pretty slow boy, uh, but the AJ-37 here is a very, very fast boy, so I really have to be careful that I don't get launched on. More importantly, he's got gun pods, so I don't really want to be on the receiving end of that, but it looks like he's not. I'm not really sure why. If he had done what I'd done in my AJ-37 video, he would have absolutely had gun pods and he would have made mincemeat out of me. So we're just going to be trying not to be made mincemeat out of against this AV-8 and this F-104. The F-104 I feel is a fairly easy kill that I can get very quickly. I dispatch him quite simply. And now it's time for the AV-8. I've just got to make sure that he doesn't go into hover mode and I am fairly confident that especially at that lower altitude where, I don't know, I just feel like this plane performs a little bit better. I'm able to exploit the weaknesses of the AV-8, being it's being a uh, bit more of a fat boy. Definitely not the uh, the turn fighter that you would hope for, but we're, again, making the most of these advantages. I think he's tried to go into hover mode, uh, but with the damage that he sustained, it's really, really difficult. And now I can just play the vertical. So bye-bye Charlie, I guess. And unfortunately for me, I get kill stunned which sucks but you know what i would rather have too many friends than not enough so we're going to move forward again you can see once again i have bled so much speed and i need the time to get this back and this is one of the nice things about the ec maps which i didn't really think of for planes like the mirage is that you can take the time to get your energy back this uh, f104 is a fresh one 
different species and is coming in nice and hot. I'm just going to ignore it because I don't really want to turn around. I don't really want to waste my energy and I have bigger fish to fry straight ahead of me. There's a Harrier, there's another Harrier and there's an F100. The F100 is juicy enough for me to want to go after it because I'm fairly confident that if I can dispatch that with a single missile, then I can one, get myself an easy kill, two, prevent an extra set of guns from heading to the enemy, uh, sorry, to the, to the allies, and three, uh, continue my advantage of pestering F100s. That Martra magic is gonna track no matter what, uh, and that allows me to secure my advantage as a uh, numbers game uh, across the board. So we are pretty much just gonna loiter around a little bit more, gaining some speed. You can see that every maneuver you make, you basically shed 400 kilometers per hour. And uh, if you're a if you're a French main, you might be familiar with that in the form of the uh, the the good old French planes. Some of them just like to shed plane shed their speed, like the SMB2. Uh, this A32A really did not have much going for it. It was a pretty easy kill. Again, this is full down tier material, so I'm not really expecting to to get any better. Now, speaking of down tiers and up tiers, in up tiers, the number one strategy that you do is run to a corner and cry because there is really nothing that you can do that makes this plane sort of sustainable. 11.3s are gonna eat you up, there's gonna be nothing for you, and you're just gonna to die to a pulse stopper radar. That's plain and simple. But these planes here that you're up against, it's definitely something that you can deal with. Now, should the planes that, uh, or should this plane be a low BR? The answer is no. Um, if you put this at a low BR, it would just simply ruin everyone else's fun. It's quite fast. So 10.0 versus 9.0, you're just going to sort of put another nail in the coffin of that sort of 9.0 to 10.0 BR. It's going to ruin it further. And so you're going to have problems. Now, speaking of problems, this F4C is going to start barreling towards me at breakneck speed. The Matra R530 is loaded, and so that gives me the opportunity to do some radar boy stuff, some interceptor stuff. I know the F4C is flat out a better interceptor in this case, or at least... I like to call this the interceptor type game style, where you're sitting at altitude, you're basically poking each other with missiles, and whoever has the longest pole wins the joust. So we're entering a situation here where the F4C is just flat out not paying attention, and that's kill number six. Honestly, absolutely fantastic. This is something that I, you know, didn't really think would have occurred in the Mirage 3E. These are the types of engagements that you really want. You gotta pick out your opponent when they're not watching. You gotta pick out an opponent that is uh, sort of suitable to your plane's performance level. And if they're not, you've gotta find some friends that can allow you to uh, get on the upper hand. And this is kind of what's happening here. The AJ-37 is preoccupied with the SU-25. And uh, you know what, I think I can lend a little helping hand here, provided that the AJ-37 doesn't do any more of those pesky flares. And he has gone into a bit of a dive here. He's popped his last set of flares. And I'm just going to go for broke here. I just get lucky. The uh, missile makes its way into the enemy. And I get seven kills. But of course, all of these have happened over the span of about 25 minutes or, or 27 minutes. And this has pretty much led the game timer to go out. And if you look at the tickets, um, there's not really much for us. And despite this plane having the capabilities that it did, at 20 seconds left, seven kills, one assist, we're still on the losing side because of tickets. And this is probably the one match that summarizes the Mirage 3E perfectly to me. No matter how well you do in this plane, you'll still get fucked in the asshole for it, and you'll still have a really miserable time playing it. No matter how well you do, everything is going to be difficult, everything is going to be a slog, and you will not have fun. And that's kind of what I've experienced in the Mirage 3E, um, and I just don't see it happening any other way. And it's really sad. But that kind of explains why you don't see any mirages in the wild, because, frankly, they're not that good. Anyway, ladies and gents, despite that negative note to end, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring today's video. Check them out in the link in the description. But for now, take care, and I'll catch you next time.